my name is Jacob, and I'm a Norse pagan, and welcome to the 16th episode of the Folk Podcast. If you're seeing our faces, you are watching this on YouTube. We've never actually formally put an episode on YouTube, nor do we plan on, put it, plan on putting all of our episodes on YouTube in the future. But it's come to my attention, especially at my last live stream, that a lot of people didn't realize that I actually am on a podcast with three other people, and we bring on guests almost every single week. So I figured it'd be great to have this conversation uh, where you see our bright, shining faces, you hear a little bit about um, the co-host stories, and then we move into the episode. And today's topic is we're talking about people taking their time and slowing it down when it comes to you know getting to this faith for the first time. But before we get into that, let me give you a brief introduction to all the co-hosts here. That way you kind of get to know our voices, get to know our faces and our stories in case you want to check out the episode later. All podcast episodes are available on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. Name, if it has the name podcast at the end, it's most likely there. But let's go ahead and let the co-host speak. Ian, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your story. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ian. I'm a Norse Pagan. Um, so I've been a Norse Pagan for about uh going on four years strong now um you know i started at a relatively early age kind of we all kind of talk about our stories at the very first episode of the podcast um some of you may recognize me from the ball gathering video uh i did an interview with jacob during that time frame a good way to find me i'm gonna do a shameless plug right out of the gate is on instagram at desert underscore pagan uh i am a follower of hell she's my matron um yeah, that's really all I got right for right now. Sure, go ahead. Uh, howdy, everyone. Uh, the name's Caleb. I'm a pagan for roughly six, seven months now. Uh, starting new to the journey, kind of. Uh, I was also at the fall gathering with Ian. You can find me at uh, Big Shirt KS on Instagram. Uh, I was a Christian minister for several several years since i was 16 but converted to paganism and that's pretty much a generalization of my story the other caleb baker what's up everybody i'm uh, caleb baker i've been with jacob since uh ostara one of the original nine uh as far as the gatherings go and i was the one that did all the tattoos um for the the fellowship as we call it oh yeah you're going showing it off now if you want to check out any of my tattoo stuff, you can uh, check me out on Instagram at uh, Big Bjorn. I can't remember if there's an underscore or not in between that. All right, cool. So yeah, this is just a brief introduction. We have uh, 15 other episodes besides this one. Our first one is just mostly our stories if you want to do a deeper dive. Obviously, I don't think I need to share my story. I think everyone's probably tired of it, even though I, I usually have to keep on telling it. But if you want to find my story, you're in the right place. You're at the Wisdom of Odin. But we're going to go ahead and move into the episode, once again, talking about the, the topic of taking your time in this faith, especially for new practitioners. Yeah, so I know I have a lot to say on this topic. Um, this is actually my idea um, for an episode. And a lot of people do not like to start at the beginning. Everybody wants to go dive into the deeper things, such as, uh, you know, like deep rune stuff, say their stuff, uh, working with, um, you know, individuals that are not quite in that realm of their level as far as deities go. Uh, it's something that you can potentially get yourself in spiritual trouble with. You know, it's taking those first steps is very crucial. And there's a lot to learn in this faith. I mean, but you have to start at the beginning. You have to start with the poetic it is, the mythos, you know, learn about all the gods as much as you possibly can before diving into those deeper things. So yeah, I definitely have a lot to say about this, but I'm going to see, let everybody else kind of do their thing first, and I'll kind of touch on probably all of it at some point. <laughs> I should say, this is more of a casual episode. Typically, we do like mute our mics and take our time, mm -hmm. and we usually have a, another guest on here sharing their story alongside of us. Um, but since this is more of an open topic as far as something that we've all noticed, um, I do want to give us a slight precursor um, saying that, you know, we're all still in, you know, working on our faith. Obviously, we're all under the age of 30. We're all still figuring out. Wait, Ian, how old are you? I'm getting there. Getting there? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, we're, <laughs> we're still young blood as far as our spiritual path. He, Ian been... was there whenever the Odin and his brothers swore to Midgard on Limla. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Chris that you did all that stuff to. No, no I, I did. Both. I, I switched it in between Parker, Chris, and, and Ian. It's whatever I'm feeling at that point in time. Um, but essentially, you know, we're just 
we're just trying to figure out our way too. And we're hoping to help others. You know, it's just something we've noticed that people come into this faith, you know, that have been into it. We're like, oh, how long have you been, you know, following in the old Scott, Norse gods? And they're like, oh, for a week. And we're like, oh, okay. And they're like, I want to do runes. I want to practice Sather. I want to worship Fenrir. And like, how do I do shamanism and trance work? And we're like, dude, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of why we're doing this episode we recognize the fact that we don't know everything nor will we ever this is a lifelong journey but we hope to make sure other people understand that this is a lifelong journey <laughs> and we also you know we're not trying to gatekeep or anything we're, we're mostly doing this to try to help you out for those that are, are new and are trying to figure out this path and way yeah that's actually a good way of looking at it is not gatekeeping but more of like guiding you in a good direction to branch out into those other things because yeah, like it, it's it's one of those things you have to take baby steps and you have to take your time with the basics and climbing your way up. Like, sure, I'll admit I've done some things that I look at when I started practicing this several years ago, and I look at it now. I'm just like, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that, or I did this wrong, or I misused the runes in this way or that way. And it's there's just so much to it. I mean, Jacob, you've said it the best. This is the religion of homework because there is so much that you have to learn but you have to be patient with it and you have to take your time and find that right thing that calls to you um i will also say that you know yes it's a religion with homework but something i've been pushing people a lot more lately um is to actually go out and do things you know like they're like okay i've read all these books what's my next step i'm like have you tried talking to the gods and they're like no I'm like, maybe you should try go talking to those gods. And I think the thing that I've been saying a lot that I wish I would have heard at the very beginning is go out into the woods, you know, follow the energy that's around you, follow the trees, follow the rivers. And once you find something, you know, try to put a name to it, you know, see who calls to you. Um, you know, what presence are you feeling? You know, it doesn't need to be this hard line thing. You know, if you're walking around, it's like, no, you know what, this might just be a spirit. Or if you see ravens or crows and you're like, maybe that is Odin, start giving those explorations to yourself because that's what the ancestors had to do. Before they put names to these things, they had to feel these things. So I would recommend doing that the same way. Go out and start having experiences. Oh yeah, exactly. hundred um, percent. Like I said, I, I know I have, I said I had a lot to say on this. I don't want to mm. dominate it, but I, like I said, I have a lot to say on this subject. Um, and the other thing that like, that kind of falls under that same like uh, way of thinking is that you don't expect the answers right away and don't expect everybody or somebody else to have all the answers for you. Cause I've noticed that being a regular thing where instead of doing the reading, instead of going out and looking for your, your answers yourself, a lot of people will go to those who they know have been in this faith for a while and they'll be like, hey, I think this is, you know, what do you think of this? You know, or they'll ask you to explain everything for them instead of going and looking for it for themselves, which, you know, every, yes, there's going to be similarities between experiences, but at the same time, there's going to be differences and very personal experience for each individual person. It's not always going to be the exact same. Well, and then that probably comes from Christianity with expecting the same results because yeah. when you look into it, I, I can spend hours talking about this, but um, Christianity is you're saved and then you go out and you rinse, repeat Wednesday, Sundays, read the Bible, whatever. And, and with not just Norse paganism, but with all paganism, it's different because our gods don't operate the same as the Christian gods. Like it's, personal it's more uh tangible if that makes any sense where you can actually go out and you feel it you see it you you experience these feelings these emotions uh you know like i've heard jacob tell stories several times where you just he tells people put your hands in the water or, you know follow me and you'll go see Odin. and yeah. these are things that separates our religion from christianity and and with you being new to this faith you're you're got to learn to adjust from Christianity to paganism if you're from a Christian background, uh, which I, I'm assuming most people are because, you know, we, we live in America, down upon Christianity or the Christian world in general. Uh, and it's, it's can be a challenge. It can be a chore to do that. And that's something you're going to have to learn to adapt and, and grow on and take your time with, you know, like Ian has already said, read the Poetic Edda. If, you, if you, the Poetic Edda is too much, read North, Neil Gaiman's North Mythology. Start somewhere. 
and learn the gods first. That's that's the very first thing you should do is learn who the gods are, the Aesir, the Vanir, and the other ones like the Jotuns, you know. Just learn the lore, learn the myth. That's the very first place I would suggest people starting. Yeah, 100% agree with that. If I want to... Uh, the important thing to... Oh, sorry, <laughs> I was just going to say the important thing to keep in mind is just to, especially whenever you're, you're new... Go with your gut on stuff. You know, you don't always have to know everything exactly right. Just, you know, do it to a to a, a point because you don't want to go out and give an oath or give a blood offering to something that you don't even know what it is yet. But a lot of times you can just kind of go with your gut, especially with like what Jacob was saying, going out uh, into the forest or in the woods and just kind of feeling what the energies kind of lead you to and trying to put a name to it. The one thing I wanted to piggyback off of uh, assured, and this goes well with Baker as well, is um, people looking are looking for spiritual replacements to Christian things. So like mm -hmm. baptism, people are looking for that pagan version of baptism. And I don't think they're doing it like consciously. I think it's subconscious. They're like, okay, well, Christianity, you have to get baptized. What do I have to do in paganism? There's really nothing like that. There's nothing historical we have written down that, you know, concentrates at baptism. So I think a lot of people give oaths and oath rings to that. And I think it's the number one most asked question I've ever gotten, uh, I've ever gotten. And it's the number one thing I will refuse to make a video about because the problem with oaths and oath rings is people are looking for that baptism replacement. And so I feel like if I make a video about them, they're just going to keep going to it. And I think it is a little bit of Vikings fault because episode one that most people have probably seen, you know, there's an oath with like the salt and the earth on the sword, like right off the bat. And so I feel like a lot of people attach that so heavy for something being so like, yes, oaths are sacred, but they are not a baptism. And I, you know, and also like, I'm trying to think of other things, but like matrons and patrons, like, I feel like there is also a rush from people to go from, oh, well, there was one God in Christianity. And now they're in this polytheistic religion. And yes, they recognize there's multiple gods, but they still want to attach to that one deity thing, even though they don't necessarily consciously think it's because of Christianity. But I, I really do think that there's a connection there. Um, because I think oaths and oath rings and the matrons and patrons are the first thing that people rush to. And I really think it's one of those things that's like, that's like years down the line. It took me two or three years to pick a patron. It took me, you know, a long time to give my first oath. And so I think people, this is the whole thing. It's just slow down. You don't have to do these things in the first week. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually, I never really thought of it that right. way as, as looking at it as like a baptism or like that replacement. But now as you explain that, like it definitely makes a lot of sense because usually within the first, I've, you know, it, I've seen it on the Discord plenty of times where, um, you know, you have individuals who are maybe a weekend, a month into practicing this, you know, and then they're like, I want to have Tyr or Odin as my patron. And then I've seen some very obscure ones that, I'm just like, no, 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 like, like, no, you do not want this person or this being as your matron or patron being, you know, examples. I've seen a couple with Fenrir. That's not a God's being that you want to be dealing with week, week one, even year one kind of a situation, you know, yeah. um, it's, and, you know, and then there was uh, uh, an individual in the discord, they were talking about a friend of theirs who wanted to make their very first offering, right? And they were asking, they were asking me about it. And uh, their first offering they wanted to make to uh, make was to Mimir. I was just oh, like, yeah. Like I could see it to a certain degree, but at the same time, like that is a that is a being within Norse paganism that is, I would say up on like the upper echelon of we'll give it some time. You know well, what I mean? It's like, the equivalent of like, I want to give to the Norns week one. It's like, yeah, exactly. I've heard, you know, I heard conflicting <laughs> theories on the Norns. Some people think you can talk to them. Some people think they listen, but they don't talk back. And some people are like, you can't reach the Norns. Like I've seen it so such across the spectrum, but same with Mimir. I've contemplated it being an Odin follower, but I'm like, I don't even like, there's no written sources to go off of to even mm -hmm. talk about Mimir worship if there was Mimir wor worship. And so, and then you have like the whole, like, this is the, like, this is an old bean, like Mimir and the Norns, you know, Jormungandr, uh, Nidhogg, like these are all ancient beings. And so to, to think about even connecting with them in a 30 year practice, let alone a 30 day practice is just insane. Yeah, and it's funny that you bring up Jormungandr because he's actually been a topic of discussion for me quite a bit um, oh. in the discord that I've had with some people. And <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's one of those things like, here's my theory, especially with working with him is he's such an old power such an you know a powerful being overall 
that I honestly don't think that any of us ever in our mortal lives will ever have anything to offer him that he will bat an eye to. The best way I've explained it is like, here's a single sprinkle from that cupcake frosting. Like that's nothing. That's that is literally nothing in his you know in his view that he would be like, okay, cool, you gave me this very minuscule thing, little tiny one. Like I will you know help you out. I'm like no, I just don't. I just don't see it happening with some of these beings where they're just no. they have nothing. To, there is nothing that we can offer them that would make them bad an eye. You, you got to go in the middle of the ocean with a bull's head on the hook. <laughs> Thor style. I, didn't, I never was, even. I, I never even heard anything that. about that. <laughs> <laughs> I never I just, even heard of anybody wanting to give your Megander offerings. Yeah, I mean, I heard the Fender thing there. a few times, and I still don't understand that. But yeah, your Megander does not make any sense. Oh, well, like so there, there is a <laughs> yeah. There is there is a um. There was a. I was told about this by somebody else. Um, I haven't done too much research into it myself. So take it with a grain of salt. But um, there was a small inner cult within Norse pagans in the day that they were called like the cult of the snake or something like that, where they, they were a very small group that only worshipped Jormungandr because he was, you know, the thing that held the world together, basically. So there, was a, there is a slight bit of it. Like I said, I've heard this through somebody else. I haven't done any of that research myself um, to take it, like I said, with a grain of salt. But there are some alleged reports of people doing things like that. And I mean, I get it to a certain degree, but like nowadays, you know, with a lot of, I just don't see it being, I just don't see it making any sense, honestly. <laughs> well, the first person ever messaged me about like Fenrir worship, like this was probably six or eight months ago. And I just remember like thinking, but why? Right. <laughs> especially right. the new practitioners, like, you know, why would, you know, well, especially as an Odin worshiper, I'm like, I don't feel like I should talk about Fenrir. <laughs> I feel like that's wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, had anybody ask y'all about like uh, Jotun worship or anything like that? I've mm. seen it a few times on Facebook and stuff like that. Well, Facebook and on, our Discord. Instagram. Yeah, our Discords. Uh, there's been a few who asked about Jotuns. Well, so the thing with that, I've, I haven't, as far as like the Jotun as by themselves no but if you think about it like for me example hell's my matron she's technically jotun if you look at it. loki and anger both they're both of jotun Plus, so, you know, well like, so is jotun. odin in them as well yeah in a way yeah exactly so like yeah their part yeah so it, there's a there's a certain like that's where i would direct them if they, somebody was to ask me that like well okay if you're looking to worship the jotun like well here are some of the gods that are literally descended from jotun you know, like if that's Thor. where you're trying to, yeah, if that's where you're trying to go towards, like find out where those descendants, those uh, bloodlines go, because most of the gods came from Jotun. If you look at it, if you really think about it to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like one of my, I, I wouldn't even call it like my, I guess my PSAs lately is understanding, and especially when this episode comes out, I've already released my holiday video. And basically my PSA there is we have so little written evidence on the actual like practice of the religion that it's hard to, you know, get things that are, would make sense. So a lot of this information, especially when it comes to things like Jotun worship and even like Jormungandr and Fenrir, like there is so like absolutely zero information on past worship at times. And so you're going a lot of, you know, people's experiences and written record from like the past 100 years. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, we have to understand that, you know, as a historical context, a lot of these bigger concepts do not have historical backing. And I think that's something that a lot of people have struggled with when they first come to this faith is accepting some of those things that are sometimes told us as truth when they actually are not truth. Um, even like the runes, you know, when you first get into this faith, like the runes are something that's very attractive. But the runes are also very shrouded in mystery. Yes, we know the you know pre-Christian Scandinavian and Germanic societies had a way of divination. You know, uh, Tacitus you know records us by drawing lots, but we don't know if that was the runes itself, and we definitely do not know that you know like algae is represented protection and death. Like you know these things you know didn't have written record back then, and so we kind of are going off of you know modern interpretations of these things. And again, that's not a bad thing. But it's really hard when you first get into this to accept those truths that you, for the longest time, especially when you get into this faith, you know, seem like they were, you know, historical things. Definitely. I mean, like you said with the runes, uh, most of their traditions from what we found out were told orally, you know, so it's, it's going to be hard to go back and dig in and look. Uh, 
we only know about the elder Futhark and younger Futhark. And that's about it as far as like written. And the Anglo Saxon Futhark, too. Yeah. That's true. But, uh, and, and that's one thing, too, is talking about runes. It's, I'm seven, eight months in, and I've only really looked at three or four runes. Like, I have runes, but I haven't been called to the runes. So I, I only mess with the ones that come to me. And until then, I won't really dive deeper into them until all of them reveal themselves to me along my path and journey. And that's something that, as as someone new to the faith, you should consider because they do have their own power and their own energy themselves. Uh, Because to me, whenever you look at the runes, it requires sacrifice to learn. Odin, what was it, nine days on the judicial? Himself to himself? You know, that, that was a major sacrifice he made to learn the power of the runes. And to really get the grasp of the runes, to me, you're going to have to sacrifice something to that extent. And that's why, you know, it's so, in the rune video I've done, um, you know, it's so prominent in like the wooden spoon, like, you know, getting smacked <laughs> with it. Because it's going to happen a lot of times, especially in this faith in general. Like, you are not going to be right from day one. Like, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Now, I'm here, you know, we're all here to tell you that's not a bad thing. You just have to recognize those mistakes. Um, and another thing I wanted to bring up with runes is something that I think is very prominent, you know, week one when people get into this because they're on Instagram and they're watching things is bind runes. You know, bind mm-hmm. runes are definitely something that, you know, when you first get into this faith, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I got to make a bind rune right away. Oh, what's my runes? Oh, can you make me a bind rune? You know, and it's like, that's again, bind runes should not be day one. It should not be week one. Bind runes should be like year three, four, like sometimes <laughs> 10, like, you know, you should really decide on bind runes, you know, and really contemplate it. Like it took me a year to make this one. Um, and once again, recognizing the fact that this is not something that was probably historically done by the ancestors, but it, it is something that is a modern, you know, interpretation of something we can do with the runes, which again, it's like, you know, when I was learning these things, like my head was exploding because when I first got into it, I'm like, oh yeah, bind runes, the Vikings had bind runes. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And then you start learning about it and you're like, what? They did What's going on? Is my life a lie? <laughs> and this is why you got to take your time because if you if you're told all the truths on week one, you're like, ah! <laughs> like, it, it can uh, really it's, hey, it you always can... just makes me remember that uh, that story you tell of uh, that dude that I, well, I don't want to give away information. There was a person that messaged you about an oath that they did like right as soon as oh, they first started. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell this story. If you're this person, I'm sorry, but I think I even told you you're screwed. So you know what? <laughs> screwed, my dude. Go ahead and tell the story. Z. Okay. So I can't remember exactly when it was I first heard this from Jacob, but it was uh, this guy had messaged uh, Jake, and I think he said he was like 14 or 15 years old or something like it, said that he had made an oath to the gods. And I think it might have been Odin, if I'm remembering it exactly right and said that he was not going to have sex until he made a difference in the world. And then a year or so later, he decided that, uh, you know, he, he really missed out and, you know, he hates not being able to have sex. Yeah, I think, he was, I think he was, I think he was screwed. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the exact progression was, so I think he made the oath when he was 15 and he was 16 now. And he was asking me about like, I kind of want to have sex was kind of the undertone to it. And so like, what do I do to get out of this oath? And I'm like, well, how serious with the oath? Cause like, we've all made passing promises. Like, you know, mm-hmm. oh, I promise to do this, especially when you're younger. I'm like, well, how serious was it? And they were like, oh, I bloodied my hand and covered these runes and like tossed the rune talisman into a, like a lake. And I'm like, dog, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, you better uh, make a difference in the world real quick <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely go raid something dude uh, you better be like ragnar after this point yeah all right like uh, you better like be a genius like you better start inventing stuff real quick <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah yeah oh, uh, that, that's, poor person. That's a, and that's i think where a lot of people start falling under like trying to find their their matron and patrons so early on too is because they want to make because i for at least with me and a a few other people that i know it's a relatively regular thing to make some sort of promise to the deity that you are you know having as your matron or patron like i know i did it when uh hell came to me about being her matron or being a follower for her um and the funny thing is is yeah like it, it takes years worth of time and practice the famous beard stacking i see 
that's not long. Uh, <laughs> it's being recorded. I have to. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's things like take, taking it on a, a matron or patron or being taken on is the better way of looking at it because you don't choose your major patron they choose you basically is the best way to look at it and a lot of people fail to understand that um but yeah like for me i initially thought that scotty was going to be my matron i had worked with her for a relatively long time you know and it was you know not until last year that you know hell came into my life and was like no 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 you're you're mine like you belong to me kind of a thing and it was you know out of nowhere you know very intense and everything like that and you know I had been working with Scotty to a degree for several years at that point you know and it's again it's kind of like that with the runes you have to and O's and everything like that like you have to know what you're actually getting yourself into I'm impressed with those stayed in there yeah now granted I uh, me and Sherd both kind of ended up with patrons fairly quick Odin just kind of took me yeah. <laughs> Odin kind of took me at Ostara. I cut my hand and I got blood all over an offering for him and everything like that. And then there was a bunch of other stuff that happened that I'm not going to go into detail on. Mm. And Sherrod Lily had his uh, his life saved by Thor. So yeah, yeah, and things like that. Like that, there's going to be obviously like different situations, you know, where it's going to be like very in your face right out of the gate. Um, but for the most part, like it's not always going to be like that. Like nine times out of ten, like. I feel like what happens with some people is they, you know, they they are brought into the faith because they had an experience with say like Odin or Thor and they automatically think that, hey, that's my patron because they brought me into the faith, which isn't always the case. Like, you know, there's tons of, pur- like there's gonna be purpose behind why a deity brought you in, you know, and it just happened to be, that's the one that you felt or that you saw or what, you know, whatever the experience was that brought you into the faith. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be your patron or matron. They just said, hey, come here, follow me. Like, they were the easiest one for you to recognize. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It was probably the one that called out to them the easiest, the one that yeah. can get the most recognition first. Um, because, you know, and it could be like, if you're a musician and then you feel the presence of Braggy, you know, he can be the one to bring you in there, but that doesn't mean Braggy's going to be your patron, but he could be the one that leads you to the Norse faith through your music or poetry or art or whatever it is, because uh, all the gods represent different things. Well, you know, and you can work with a god for years, you know, work for, you know, a deity for four or five years, work with them, learn from them, but you don't have to be their matron, you know, you don't have to be their, you know, advocate or whatever, what, what would it be? Like the follower. Disciple? Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. disciple. Uh, disciple uh, is a technical uh, term for it. But, that disciple. But <laughs> we'll, bring, we'll bring out the alcohol. We, the acolytes, Jacob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, fletch- <Yeah>. the fletchlings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but yeah. Uh, Rawls. Yeah. The, I mean, the, yeah. T- disciple is a technical term for that, but that's too Christian sounding. <laughs> uh, so real quick with the with the joking aside uh i do want to say like the reason you should listen to the full podcast is because you're going to hear a lot more concepts i'm not necessarily going to talk about on the wisdom of odin as a whole just because i want to make sure everything i say in a video is like very well researched as best it can or at least i've had personal experience with it so with the full podcast you're going to, I mean, these are hour-long episodes you're going to hear a lot more of my opinion-based things you know things that i've experienced and seen with my own eyes in this community in the faith as a you know as a modern structure so that's why i think the full co- full podcast has an interesting spot because we do cover a lot of subjects that i will also talk about in the wisdom of odin youtube channel but we're going to dive into a lot of different subjects so that's why my that was my precursor for bringing up blood <laughs> offerings because this is something i doubt i will i you know i don't know if i'm ever ready to make a full video on this just because i don't even know if youtube will be like okay with it but like probably not, probably probably not. not. so like not- let's like kind of like weave around it because you know we'll see how it goes but blood <laughs> offerings because like obviously this is something that a lot of people have questions about but it's very hard to talk about this is much easier to discuss in person but as far as like teaching someone over the internet how to properly give blood offerings what are their purposes it's really hard and i feel like a lot of people want to rush into that as well and it's like whoa that's like- a serious whoa. commitment right there uh, yeah. <sighs> coming from a christian background you know and just looking at biology in and of itself your blood is your life like that's 
the equivalence of it. And, and for you to give a God or a deity blood is to give them yourself. That is to me like the most ultimate thing you could give anyone ever is your blood, your yourself. Yeah. It, I agree with that. Like it is, it's a, a, a very deep commitment to whether it's an oath or taking on a matron or patron or, you know, a, a, it's just, anything honestly like dealing with the runes i know those who like once you kind of start diving deeper into the runes and you make your own usually the process is to blood them so that they are more connected to yourself specifically um you know and it, it's yeah again it's one of those things like it's a very i don't want to say sensitive subject but it's a very touchy subject because well it's a modern taboo because it's yeah the, modern, yeah you know pop you know pop popular religion and so long you know whereas but you know 100 300 400 years ago it was more prominent and now it's like it's just so taboo to talk about blood in a you know a spiritual sense yeah well, that's actually, like i said that goes back to being the christian thing i mean that's why you know it's it, it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it, yeah it, it is it's it's yeah more of a taboo like even you know getting some tattoos done like in a way depending if there's like spiritual place like you know three of us right here have binary and tattooed on us you know like in a way that is giving a blood offering i have my i have my health tattoo you know that in a way was giving my literally my body i have a femur tattoo as well which you know eh, i kind of did that by accident without thinking about it but you know it is what it is but um you know i at least understand that what i we you know in the grand scheme of things i know what i did um but it's a lot of people don't understand that like you are literally giving part of yourself you know like mm -hmm. i'm carrying two deities around on my arms right now so it's like cool <laughs> but it's not cool at the same time <laughs> i think it's one of those things like ignorance is bliss like not having yeah. intention behind things like yeah you're just going to go about your life you know people get runes tattooed them all the time and don't even follow this religion and like do they have negative side effects from having those tattoos probably not but at no. the same time, like when you have intention behind things, like, you know, every tattoo I have on my body had an intention behind it. And to me, that's what gives, you know, magic in itself power or, you know, this faith power. Mm -hmm. when you Actually, like when you give an offering, if you have a purpose behind it, it's going to have meaning. But if you're just like, you know, standing on your back porch and you're like, here's an apple. And you just like toss an apple. Like there's no ritual behind it. There's no <laughs> intent behind it. Like you're just, tossing a, you're just a dude tossing an apple into the woods at that point. Like there's, yeah. All right. Well, you said it all right there. It was the power of intent. Anyone who's like Wiccan or practices any kind of witchcraft will understand that way more than someone who doesn't. Your intentions mean the world to like, as far as like spiritualistic stuff goes. And that's actually a good segue for something that I've talked about a lot as far as starting out and taking your time with is uh, offerings and altars. So I know there's Instagram pages all over and, you know, these people have these crazy elaborate, you know, super witchy and, you know, mystic looking altars and stuff like that. You know, and, and a lot of people see that, especially coming in, they think, I need that. I need to have that that setup. You know, I need to have all these crazy things. You know, I'm gonna order a bunch of stuff off of Amazon, you know, whatever. But when you do that, you don't, those items don't have any meaning to them. And there's no reason to, to go spend hundreds of dollars on crap that, you know, has zero meaning to you that you're gonna put on an altar that you're gonna use to worship the gods. You know, most of us have taken several years to build up our altars. And, you know, like I, for, you know, I've taken several, yeah, several years to build up my main altar that I use for all the other, you know, for the deities that aren't my matron, obviously. So Hell has her own very specific one that's part of her thing. But even that took me about a good year to set up. Like, granted, it's my more, I would say, bougie altar because mm. she is my matron you know so like yeah i showed more a little bit more love to that one than the rest but you know i everything that i have on it has intent it has purpose behind it it's not just something that i necessarily ordered off of amazon or you know it, it's it's most of them are gifts from people you know like caleb during the fall gathering you gave me that cow skull like that's on that altar uh other caleb you gave me that <laughs> that hog skull at the text gathering that's on that altar you know what i mean yeah i've gotten basically it's a bunch of animal skulls 
you know, when we get so yeah, 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 exactly. I, found another, <laughs> I, I found another cow skull by the way in the woods. Oh, it's it's already yeah. claimed. I can't. It's already claimed by someone. <laughs> but yeah, that's like the thing is, is like they all have some sort of meaning and purpose and feeling behind them. It's not just random things that I purchased. You know, like some things, yes, I purchased, but I gave them intent. I gave that item intent. It was you know basic things like an offering bowl. And that's the other thing too. You don't, like I said, you don't need a crazy bougie altar that is like Instagram photo worthy. Some people, you know, they, they can't, they don't have the space to do that. So, you know, one of the greatest advices that I've heard from anybody in the discord is you can literally have a tea candle and a shot glass. That's all you need. Like it's, it's all about the intent and the energy behind it. You don't have to rush going into having a whole altar room or a whole table with all these knickknacks and mystical things, you know, strewn well, about. And plus, if you start with a whole altar room on week one, you're screwed because if you stick with it, the amount of stuff you collect, I mean, shoot, oh, yeah. this last year alone, I've had a du- like triple the size of my previous altar. Like before it was like a table like this big. And now I have mm. a two tiered like deck of like mm. all this stuff. And the thing that I love and this whole time you've been talking, I've been thinking like every object on that altar, I can tell you the story behind it. Mm-hmm. and it has a right. meaning behind it so like even um like we talk about like buying stuff on amazon like i i'm not you know i don't typically like supporting amazon i like to support you know etsy and things like that but you know having said that you know keenan came to the fall gathering we were all there he brought those mm-hmm. gifts those like little thor's hammer you know me uh, pendants. oh yeah yeah he gave me, he, he, he yeah, made, yeah, yeah the phone necklace like some of those yeah. things like yeah i looked at it and i was like oh this is a little cheap because like he said he got it from someone that just had a bunch so they, they clearly like drop ship ordered it but at the same time, I still have those in my altar, like the two, like the Mjolnir and like the Vetrisir necklace, because it has mm-hmm. a story behind it now. Because like Keenan was invited two days before that gathering, and that yeah. dude brought gifts for everyone. Yeah, yeah See, like, 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 gifts for every <laughs> single person there. Yeah, and then like what's really cool about mine though, we're talking about Keenan, like he personally made this wooden Mjolnir, and like he's like, dude, as soon as I made it, I thought of you, and like here, I'm like, yes, and it's on it's on my altar, the one I started making here. Uh, but most of the time, I don't even have an altar. I just use it outside. I, I go to my different places I have where I've connected to the gods. I don't even use an altar at home. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if you if you have the, cap- the capability to go outside, like, Jacob, I think you literally just talked about this in one of your last videos, where, like, not everybody is obviously going to have the capability of going outside and, you know, going to nature. So, like, you know, indoor altars are a very big deal for a lot of people. Um you know, for me, it's, I have some places that I can go, but it's like two hours away, you know, where I would have to travel. There's not a whole lot where I'm at in New Mexico that I've connected to. Ian, you can't hide behind it. You're on video camera now. I see that tree behind you. Don't lie. Okay, mine is, okay, so <laughs> funny story. So, funny story about that tree, actually, is that is where I uh, put food offerings after I'm done with this. So, like, I will have stuff. I have a rock that I actually, one of those, the flat shale rocks that were at the fall gathering um, near that creek. I have one of those sitting out there, actually, near that tree. And what I'll do is I will make my offerings, my indoor altar. Usually, I only put fruit out there. But once it's, you know, sat there for a little bit, I will take that fruit and, or vegetables. I will actually place it at that tree as in my way of, you know, kind of the recycling of, you know, instead of throwing it in the trash or something like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, okay. The tree, yeah. That's that's the tree that I've talked about before. Yeah, that's no, I, I get it. Like, I, it's definitely the stages. Like, I have my indoor altar. You know, I typically just, you know, like, I have my outdoor small altar by the tree near my apartment, and that's great. Most people, you know, a lot of people in apartments don't get that. Like, if, shoot, if I lived mm-hmm. on the second floor, I probably wouldn't have that. Um, but at the same time, like, I use my indoor altar really to store a lot of my objects because I don't want to yeah. store, like, you know, my sacred objects just, like, in the closet. You know, I want to have a special spot for them. So, you know, I keep my Mjolnir on there and stuff. But even, you know, I think it's very important. And I, I was talking about this on the live stream, I think. It's like, look, I know mm-hmm. you might live in a city, but you can't tell me you can't drive two hours and get somewhere beautiful. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's, you know, maybe like New York or something like that. But at the same time, like you could, th- that gives it meaning too. When you make a pilgrimage somewhere and you, dr- you know, spend the time to drive really far, you know, it takes me like an hour and a half to get to the gorge. And that's what oh, I like to do. To, you know like yeah caleb yeah, yeah i just i went up there like what a week and a half ago i drove three and a half hours to the gorge i got up like two o'clock that morning so i could get there and watch the sunrise at that uh the spot yeah. where you gave that off in the frig man that the, watching the sunrise there is just like <laughs> magical dude i love it yeah and that's the thing like yeah again like it's yeah that that effort and that intent behind doing certain things is yeah like with me 
I go to the Palo Duro Canyons in Texas. It's the closest like really big natural park that I would say was within relatively decent driving um, range. And yeah, I have to get up at like, I usually get up about five o'clock in the morning. You know, the sun's not even up yet. I make my drive over there and I get there like right as the park opens, which is around eight o'clock in the morning. So that way, like I'm one of the first people there. I don't have to worry about any other like human traffic you know what i mean like i want to have my time where i can go off on the trail and you know not be disturbed by doing something whether it's an offering or just meditating or just enjoying the scenery you know and every time i've gone out there i've had really good experiences i found my famous walking stick that yeah. out there you know my rafiki stick um <laughs> you know i i had my very first uh experience and connection with nerthus out there the last time i went out there you're welcome. You know, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's the intention behind a lot of that stuff has a huge impact and it's not about the object, it's about the intent. It's my biggest advice for that stuff. Like you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to have an Instagram photo worthy, you know, alter. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sure, do you want to say something? I got a big point. Uh, I was just going to say that, yeah, all that, that monologue and that you just did would just go back to intent. <laughs> <laughs> yep. no, I was uh, what I was going to do is bring it back to you know the advice for people you know basically how to slow down but it also is you know work like you got to put in the work like you can't expect all of this to be given to you the first week and nor should you want it to all come at you the first week um, you know I was sitting here reflecting I mean look at it we got um, Baker's from Tennessee I'm from Kentucky Ian you're from New Mexico Sherger you're from Texas and we have all met in person and yeah. like you know that took work you know you guys had to drive 20 plus hours to you know to see, come to that fall gathering and so like but at the same time you know while that was a long drive and i'm sure you didn't want to do it the next day but it was worth it wasn't it oh, oh yeah 100 yeah, i'd yeah. do it again in a heartbeat you know yeah, i mean yeah. it, but just to see you guys not even to go to yeah. another gathering but like i mean it's worth it you gotta put in the work and in, in the uh the gumption but it's, it's definitely worth it yeah and not to get into too, too much specifics on like who these people are but there's definitely a group in the community at large that don't want to put in work and you know this isn't like a, an attack at them or anything like that but you know i have people that message me and they're like i can't feel the gods and i'm like okay well tell me what you're doing and at the you know i'm going down i'm like okay you've read the books that's great but like like i said at the very beginning you ha have to do things like you have yeah. to put in work at this and you have to work on yourself like the gods are not going to fix you like they can help you like they can guide you to the things that will fix you or will help put yourself back together but you can't just give an offering to Thor and be like, Thor, I'm so depressed. Make me not depressed anymore. And then Thor isn't going to just snap his fingers and make you not depressed. Like he might put opportunities in front of you that can lead to you, you know, helping with your depression, but the gods aren't here to save you. Yeah, they're here to guide you. And that, that's the thing I think a lot of people fail to understand. It's, and I think it partially going back to people coming from, you know, Christian backgrounds is they're looking for that immediate replacement where it's, you know, I pray to God, right? And then I'm expected him to fix something, you know, instantly, you know, snap of the finger, poof, it's gone. That's, you know, that's not how the Norse gods work. Right. You know, they you don't go really in well, Odin to fix anything for you. You ask him for the strength of the wisdom to be able to figure it out on yourself. Yeah, yourself. exactly. Exactly. And it's, you will, like you said, Jacob, like you will be given opportunities placed before you. Now, whether or not you, understand that this may be that opportunity that you need to take you know is one is a completely different thing that's obviously up to you but like kind of have to you know say you have to work for it you have to work towards it so well i mean like well, compared to christianity like the christian god he's omnipotent all powerful all knowing oh you know our gods aren't they make they make flaws you know they they are just as much human in a way as we are they just have more power than we do and they can guide us and lead us, and so they just can't do it for us. And that's They're more relatable. Yeah, and that's that's one thing we gotta realize is, yeah, they can't help us, and they will help us if we prove to them we're worth helping. In a way. So I remember, you know, this was way back the the, the dawning days of my spiritual journey uh, when I was right before I left the restaurant business and moved into freelance photography, long before the wisdom of Odin started. And I remember I was struggling because I just left a, you know, a very well-paying restaurant management job. And I actually stepped down to just serving tables again, because I didn't want that life. Um, and I was looking for that next step. And I was, you know, asking Odin, I'm like, Odin, I really need guidance. I need a sign. 
And I had been contemplating at that point of quitting the restaurant business and just starting freelance photography. And I was also thinking, well, maybe I can subsidize it with Uber. Like I can Uber and freelance photography at the same time. Like that could be an answer. Sure enough, you know, right after having this kind of mental conversation with Odin, I was, you know, I went up to a table and I was just like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, well, I need coffee, blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, man, I just got off of like a 12 hour Uber shift. And I'm like, oh, interesting. And he's like, yeah, I'm a musician. So like I gave up everything and became a musician. So I Uber on the side to help subsidize the income. And I'm like, this is like 30 seconds after having this conversation with Odin. Like what is happening now? Now you can sit here and say, oh, that's just coincidence. But to me, that's what how the gods work. You ask for these signs and maybe they open your eyes enough or maybe they put these things in front of you. And so it's up to you to take those actions though. Like I still had to be the one to quit my job, start a freelance photography business and, you know, struggle through that and Uber. And let me tell you, Uber was interesting and not fun at times. Uh, but at the same time, you know, these things all led me to the wisdom of Odin eventually. And now I would never look back. Like if I, if that guy hadn't been in that restaurant to like, give me that snap of the finger to like, finally do this i might not be here right now we all might not be here right now and to me that's how the gods work they're not going to snap your fingers like he odin wasn't going to be like snap his finger and he's like wow i'm a youtuber now like that's not yeah. how those things work <laughs> no no you got to be careful what you ask for sometimes these gods they will break you down but it's all to make to build you up make you stronger make you be the person that you need to be and that they need you to be to do what they need mm -hmm. definitely and it's just, it comes in time. Like you were talking about, Jacob. I mean, you went from man managing to waiting tables to Uber. Like these were all steps, much like in our, our faith and our daily lives, the practices, they're going to be baby steps. First, you recognize Norse mythology or the, that is real. It's not just a mythos that these beings have power. Then you learn about them. Then you, you know, you maybe go on to learn one or two runes or you may have a dream or something may happen that leads you down whatever path you're supposed to take, but it takes time. It's a building process. Right. Oh yeah. And I mean, that's kind of like, you know, me sharing that story. I mean, when was that? That was like 2015, I think it was. So that was five years ago. And that was about the dawn of my starting this path. And so, but at the same time, I had to go through that. I had to go through, you know, starting my own business, struggling a lot. And that eventually led me to this point now, but I couldn't have taken the last five years and condensed it in one day or one week or one month or even one year. Yeah. Like I had to live through those five years, sometimes through a lot of pain and suffering, but that, that pain and suffering leads you to better things, hopefully in the end, if you fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you follow those signs. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's like being a newborn baby. You got to learn to crawl before you walk. Yeah, it, yeah it's, and that's the thing. People immediately want to jump in. Like head, just dive in deepest point of the pool and go just absolutely bananas and try to learn everything at once. And that is super overwhelming. I, I did it. I did it myself. I was trying to learn like about the runes and the gods and other, you know, various things all at the same time. And then I was like, okay, this is beginning to be a lot. Like I need to take a step back. Let me, you know, one subject at a time. You know, and start with that. the easiest one is just read the mythos or read the Eddas. You know, it's not to mention all the hobbies you do. Oh, yeah, okay. and all the hobbies <laughs> that I have on the side. I have a lot of hobbies, guys. It is a hobby addiction. Yeah, it's bad. Fair enough. You're giving your money. <laughs> no hobby lobby. I'm watching you, Ian. <laughs> uh, he doesn't even need hobby lobby. He'll just figure out a way around it. You done yeah, any no. tattoos yet since you picked up all that stuff? Um, I've done a few practice ones on that, um, on that, skin. On that silly, yeah, the silicone skin. And you were right. It, it takes a lot as far as like mm -hmm. Passover is. It's super faded, but I mean, it's okay. It looks pretty good. I'm definitely going to do more practice. Oh, yeah. I forgot you got the hand stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Again, I have a lot of hobbies. So, to, <laughs> to, spreads. To, to rein this in. So we're getting close to the hour mark anyways. For anyone wondering, we usually keep these about an hour. I think we've had them run about an hour and a half. Um, so before we end this conversation, I do want to go by uh, everyone one pass over for one last piece of advice for anyone that's starting this path or, you know, and this can be in general, like it can be about taking your time. But if you have one piece of advice for new practitioners, what do you got starting with Ian? Oh, boy. Put on the spot first. OK. Um, the power of editing. I can make it look like you came up, came up with it on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> to start simple and work your way up. There's no reason to to start at the top and then work your way down. Always work your way from the, the easiest first step and then make your way to the top. There's no reason to skip and jump five different stairs, if that makes sense. That was weak. 
You want to? Okay, I'll, I'll come back I mean, to you. Like, that was okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna call, yeah. I'm gonna call yeah, it out. Is <laughs> you're weak. Your bloodline. Yeah, weak. it's like you just gotta go. You know, and then and like yeah. it, it was like honestly, a butterfly speech would have been better. Like you're just gonna <laughs> for a little, bit, and then you're gonna. Die, you're gonna I you're throw it on the spot. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Hey, this was your subject, okay. Ian. I know, right? <laughs> I want to quote one of my favorite uh, people in the world, uh, Confucius. The journey of 10,000 miles starts with the first step. You've taken the first step. So follow your gut, and but don't be afraid to fail. Because when you fall, you'll learn more than if you succeed. Uh, well, I've got a couple things, I believe. Um, don't forget, you can, you can always go to your ancestors anytime you've got anything that you actually need more, say, physical help with. I think they, they can, you can go to them for a lot more things where you can just ask directly for help instead of for the strength to do something or for the wisdom to figure it out or the guidance. And another thing mm -hmm. is uh, if you are able to and you've got the either the, the time, money, resources, whatever it is, if you're able to make your own items if possible. Like I've got a shelf that I made downstairs for my altar because I didn't have one. That, I didn't have anything in the house that was big enough. So I, I found this piece of wood, cut it in half, and I had a big four I think it's four and a half foot long and like two foot wide or sticking out from the wall that I have for my altar and it gives it a lot more meaning and I think it puts uh, puts my own personal energy into it so it kind of connects everything better uh for the gods and everything else so if you if you have the resources and time you know make stuff yourself don't just go and buy something um know what you can handle personally you know do not go into these these deeper subjects and deeper connections right out of the gate like you have to know where your limitations are and you have to know what you can best handle and best understand uh, you know and that goes a lot to starting out like what shirt was saying with the first step you have to start at the you know at the most basic level before you can start you know climbing the rank so to speak or whatever you know it's 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 let me if we can do that <laughs> I was like, were you about to say climb the staircase again? I was dead. Dude, I don't know. Yeah. He did. He, uh, I'm, I'm going like, to I'm gonna go back to your first piece of advice. T start with simple. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's where I got. Okay. Ian, butterfly speech. First butterfly first. speech. Going to, going to you for Ian. The first comment you have here, not your third. Your third take. <laughs> yeah. Start, start simple. You know, it's, you have to start the most basic level with this you have to read the edas you have to read the mythos you have to understand the very basic ideas and concepts of this faith before diving into deeper things like the runes and patrons and you know oaths and deeper magics like satyr and stuff like that so yeah just start simple do not overwhelm yourself i think we'll give you credit because like this was your episode idea so like your ultimate yeah. advice is just take your time just take yeah, it take it take your time <laughs> take your time so if I have any last was your idea, but yet, oh no, um, go ahead. I was gonna clown him. You go ahead. <laughs> yeah, all we do is we're just a bunch of goofs here. Um, so if I have any last piece of advice, not that this entire Wisdom of Odin YouTube channel isn't just a bunch of advice. Um, if I have any last minute advice, if you're getting to the end of this video, it's just simply you know let this faith take you on the strangest journey of your life. Like, don't be afraid of the like. I don't want to say like the abnormal, but I was a restaurant manager and now I'm a full-time YouTuber that is like a part of this strange modern pagan movement. And it's amazing. And I would have not, I did, this was not my plan. Uh, five years ago, when I started this, when I first started giving to Odin and asking for advice, I did not expect it to lead me here. So keep an open mind. You're going to go through a lot of changes. It's not always going to be fun, but the results in the end are incredibly worth it um but take your time for the love of the gods take your time with it <laughs> not, not yes. to mention you're gonna meet some great people along the way yeah and you can make him grow mustaches like i made ian grow his mustache <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be so sad when i get rid of this thing oh right you better now. not <laughs> it's still cold uh, oh wait you're in new mexico don't get cold there does it <laughs> oh, that's pretty cold we can see it's pretty cold oh yeah Sometimes it's, it's cold it's, it's like cold. Yeah, it, it's like it's like <laughs> Gotham City outside. It's like, where I'm at. It's Gotham like 30 city. 
All right. So in co- uh, closing out this episode, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this episode of the Folk Podcast, episode 16. I hope you enjoyed it if you're watching on YouTube. Um, we really hope that you, you know, come check us out on uh, uh, the podcast, all those. Yeah, don't worry. You can take all the takes you need. We had to give you in five. Oh, I'm going to leave. <laughs> I'm going to leave them in too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so thank you for joining us for the 16th episode of the folk podcast especially if you're joining us here on youtube um i really hope you come check us out at on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, wherever you can find podcasts we're there um we post episodes every single week um and normally we do have a guest i think this is only our third episode where we haven't had a guest from the community Mm -hmm. come on we don't typically bring yeah. people that already have an established fan base. We try to bring on people that are kind of new to the community that want to share their stories or have something unique like blacksmithing or meditation and trance work. Like we have some funky subjects on there. So I really hope you go check out our previous episodes. Um, but also if you are interested on in being on the folk podcast, please email us at the folk podcast at gmail.com. Um, that's the folk podcast at gmail.com all lowercase, um, you know, share us a little bit of your story. We review at the beginning of every month to plan out our episodes, but also if you have a subject you'd like us to talk about, uh, talk about on the show, please email us there as well. But folk until next time, until the hall, skull, skull. Skull. Oh, sure. You were delayed. Uh, you know. I said it whenever you did it. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I like how Baker. A, it probably, always, I'm always sitting here with my with my uh, cup of bourbon anymore when we do these episodes. <laughs> oh, I miss alcohol so much. Oh, are you still? You are still, you, are you still dealing any? with your stuff, man? Are you, you still, oh. <laughs> dude, the, the cry. Hey, dude, dude, I haven't had alcohol or caffeine in a month, dude. Dude, oh. how are you functioning, dude? I don't know. I don't know, man. Thank you.